Jurassic Park is a film that revolutionized the film industry and would ingrain itself into the minds of both adults and children, and then a massive franchise would soon follow. Despite this, many people seem to forget the origins of this franchise from Michael Crichton's novel. Because of this, people don't seem to appreciate where their favorite moments came from. For this video, I want to talk about the T-Rex main road attack and how it was originally in the book. Claimed by many as the scariest moment from both novels, this is how the main road attack happened in Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park. Rain drummed loudly on the roof of the Land Cruiser. Tim felt the night vision goggles pressing heavily on his forehead. He reached for the knob near his ear and adjusted the intensity. There was a brief flare and then, in shades of electronic green and black, he could see the Land Cruiser behind, with Dr. Grant and Dr. Malcolm inside. Neat. Dr. Grant was staring out in the front windshield towards him. Tim saw him pick up the radio from the dash. There was a burst of static, and then he heard Dr. Grant's voice. Can you see us back here? Tim picked up the radio. I see you. Is everything all right? We're fine, Dr. Grant. Stay in the car. We will, don't worry. He clicked off the radio. Ed Regis snorted. It's pouring rain out there. Of course we'll stay in the car. Tim turned to look at, at the foliage at the side of the road. Through the goggles, the fo foliage was a bright electronic green, and beyond he could see sections of green grid pattern of the fence. The land cruisers were stopped on the downslope of a hill, which must mean they were some place near the Tyrannosaur area. It would be amazing to see a Tyrannosaur with these night vision goggles. A real thrill. Maybe the Tyrannosaur would c come to the fence and look over at them. Tim wondered if his eyes would glow in the dark when he saw them. Would That would be neat. But he didn't see anything, and eventually he stopped looking. Everyone in the car fell silent. The rain thrummed on the roofs of the car. Sheets of water streamed down over the sides of the windows. It was hard for Tim to see out, even with the goggles. How long have we been sitting here? Malcolm said. I don't know. Four or five minutes. I wonder what the problem is. Maybe a short circuit in the rain. But it happened before the rain started. There was another silence. In a tense voice, Lex said, But there's no lightning, right? She, is, she had always been afraid of lightning, and she now sat nervously squeezing her leather mitt in her hand. Dr. Grant said, What was that? that? We didn't quite read that. Just my sister. Oh. Uh, Tim, Tim again scanned the foliage, but saw nothing. Certainly nothing as big as a tyrannosaur. He began to wonder if the tyrannosaurs came out at night. Were they nocturnal animals? Tim wasn't sure. Sure, he had a feeling that tyrannosaurs were all weathered, day or night animals. The time of day didn't matter to the to a tyrannosaur. The rain continued to pour. I love our rain. It's really coming down, Enriquez said. Lex said, I'm hungry. I know that, Lex, but we're stuck in here, sweetie. The cars run on electricity and in buried cables in the road. Stuck for how long? Until they fix the electricity. Listening to the sound of the rain, Tim felt himself growing sleepy. He yawned, turned to look at the palm trees on the left side of the road. He was startled by a sudden thump as the ground shook. He swung his head, his, he swung his back just in time to catch a glimpse of a dark shape as it swiftly crossed the road between the two cars. Jesus, what was that? It was huge. It was as big as the car. Tim, are you there? He picked up the radio. Yes, I'm here. Did you see it, Tim? No, I missed it. What the hell was it? Are you wearing the night vision goggles, Tim? Yes, I'll watch. Was it the Tyrannosaur? Edrigus asked. I don't think so. It was in the road. But you didn't see it. No. Tim felt bad that he'd missed seeing the animal, 
whatever it was, there was a sudden white crack of lightning and his night vision goggles flared a bright green. He blinked his eyes and started counting. One one thousand, two two, two one thousand. The thunder crashed, definingly loud and very close. Lex began to cry. Take it easy, honey, Edriga said. It's just lightning. Tim sc scanned the road. The rain was coming down hard now. Shaking the leaves and with hammering drops, it made everything move. Everything s seemed alive. He scanned the leaves. He stopped. There was something beyond the leaves. Tim looked up higher. Behind the foliage, beyond the fence, he saw a thick body with a, with a pebbled, grainy surface, like the bark of a tree. But it wasn't a tree. He looked higher, sweeping the goggles upwards. He saw the huge head of the Tyrannosaurus, just standing there, looking over the fence at the two land cruisers. The lightning flashed again, and the big animal rolled its eyes and bellowed in the glaring rain. Then darkness and silence again. Tim? Yes, Dr. Grant? You see what it is? Yes, Dr. Grant. Tim had a sense that Dr. Grant was trying to talk in a way that wouldn't upset his sister. What's going on now? Nothing, Tim said as he watched the Tyrannosaur through the night goggles. He's just standing there on the other side of the fence. I can't see much from here, Tim. I see. I can see fine, Dr. Grant. It's just standing there. All right. Lex continued to cry. There was another pause. Tim, Tim watched the Tyrannosaur. The head was huge. It looked like it looked from one vehicle to the other, and then back again. It seemed to stare right at Tim. In the goggles, the the eyes glowed great, bright green. Tim felt a chill. But then, as he looked down at the animal's body, moving from the massive head and jaws, he saw the smaller, muscular foreland. It waved in the air, and then gripped the fence. Jesus Christ, Edriga said, staring out the window. The greatest predator in the world has ever known, the most fearsome attack in human history, somewhere in the back of his public brain. Edoregis was still writing copy, but he could feel his knees begin to shake uncontrollably, his trousers flapping like flags. Jesus, he was frightened. He didn't want to be here, alone among all the people in the two cars. Edoregis knew what a dinosaur attack was like, and he knew what happened to the people. He had seen the mangled bodies that resulted from a raptor attack. He could picture it in his mind, and this was a rex much bigger, the greatest meat-eater to ever walk the earth. When the, tyr the Tyrannosaurus roared, and it was terrifying, a scream from another world, Edrigus felt the spreading warmth in his trousers. He was simultaneously embarrassed and terrified, but he knew he had to do something. He couldn't just stay here. He had to do something. Something. His hands were shaking trembling against the dash. Jesus Christ, he said again. Bad language, Lex said, wagging her finger at him. Tim heard the sound of a door opening, and and he swung his head away from the Tyrannosaur. The night vision goggles streaked laterally in time to see Edrigus stepping out of the vehicle, ducking his head in the rain. Where are you going? Lex said. Edrigus turned and ran the oppor opposite direction from the Tyrannosaur, disappearing in the woods. The door of the Land Cruiser hung open. Pa the paneling was getting wet. He left. Where'd he go? He left us alone, Lex said. Shut the door, Tim said, but she started to scream. He left us. He left us. Tim, what's going on? It was Dr. Grant on the radio. Tim. Tim leaned forward and tried to shut the door. From the back seat, he couldn't reach the handle. He looked back at the Tyrannosaur as lightning flashed again, momentarily silhouetting the huge black shape against the white flaring sky. Tim, what's happening? He left us. He left us. Tim blinked to recover his vision. 
When he looked again, the Tyrannosaurus was still standing there, exactly as before, motionless and huge. Rain dripped from its jaws. The forelimb gripped the fence, and then Tim realized the Tyrannosaurus was holding the fence. The fence wasn't electrified anymore. Lex, close the door! The radio crackled. Tim! I'm here, Dr. Grant. What's going on? Regus ran away. He what? He ran away. I think he saw the fence isn't electrified, Tim said. The fence isn't electrified, Malcolm said over the radio. Did he say the fence isn't electrified? Lex, close the door! But Lex continued to scream. He left us. He left us in a steady wail. And then there was nothing for Tim to do but climb out of the back door into the slashing rain and shut the door. Thunder rumbled and the lightning flashed again. Tim looked up and saw the Tyrannosaurus crashing down the cyclone fence and with a huge hind limb. Timmy! He jumped back in and slammed the door, the sound lost in the thunderclap. Tim, are you there? He grabbed the radio. I'm here. He turned to Lex. Lock the doors, get in the middle of the car, and shut up. Outside the turns, so it rolled its head and took an awkward step forward. The claws of, of its feet had caught the grid of a flattened fence. Lex saw the animal and became silent, still as if still. She watched the Tyrannosaur with wide eyes. Tim? Yes, Dr. Grant? Stay in the car. Stay down. Don't, don't move and be very quiet. Okay. You should be all right. I don't think you can open the car. Okay. Just stay quiet so you don't arouse its attention any more than necessary. You, you hear that, Lex? Tim said. His sister nodded silently. She never took her eyes off the Tyrannosaur. And it roared again. In the glare of the lightning, they saw it pull free from the fence and take a bounding step forward. Now it was standing between the two cars. Tim couldn't even see Dr. Grant's car anymore, because the huge body of the Rex blocked his view. The rain, the rain ran in rivulets down the pebbled skin of the muscular hind legs. He couldn't see the animal's head, which was high above the roof line. The Tyrannosaurus moved around the side of the car and went to the very spot where Tim had gotten out of the car, where Ed Regus had gotten out of the car, and then the animal paused. The big head ducked down towards the mud. Tim looked back at Dr. Grant and Dr. Malcolm in the rear view mirror. Their faces were tense and they stared through their windshield. The huge head raised back up, jaws open, and then stopped by the side of the windows. In the glare of the light, they saw the beady, expressionless reptile eye moving in the socket. It was looking in the car. His sister's breaths came in ragged, frightened gasps. He reached out and squeezed her arm, hoping she would stay quiet. The dinosaur continued to stare for a long time through the side of the window. Perhaps the dinosaur couldn't really see them, he thought, due to the rain. Finally, the head lifted up and out of view again. It's okay, Lex. I don't think it's us. Just when Tim lo was looking towards Dr. Grant, when a jolting impact rocked the land cruiser, shattering the windshields in a spider web as the Tyrannosaurus head crashed against the hood of the land cruiser. Tim was knocked flat on his seat. The night vision goggle slid from his forehead. He could... He got back up quickly, blinking in the darkness, his mouth warm with his blood. Lex, he couldn't see his sister anywhere. The Tyrannosaur stood near the front of the Land Cruiser, its head moving as it breathed. The forelimbs making clawing movements in the air. Lex, Tim whispered, and then he heard her groan. She was lying somewhere on the fo floor under the seat. Then the huge head came down again, entirely blocking the shattered windshield. The Tyrannosaurus banged again on the front hood of the Land Cruiser and grabbed this. Tim grabbed the seat, and as the car rocked on its wheels, Tim banged. The Tyrannosaurus banged down once more, denting the metal. 
Then it moved to the side of the car. Big tail blocked his view from the side windows. At the back, the animal snorted a deep rumbling growl that blended with the thunder. It sank its jaws into the squared tire, mounted on the back of the land cruiser, and in a single headstroke, tore it away. The rear of the car lifted in the air for a moment and then thumped down with a muddy splash. Tim, are you okay? Dr. Grant asked on the radio. Tim grabbed the radio. We're okay. There was a shrill of metallic scrapes as claws raked on the roof of the car. Tim's heart was pounding in his chest. He, could, he couldn't see anything out of the windows on the right side except the pebble of the leathery flesh. The Tyrannosaurus leaned against the car, which rocked back and forth with each breath, the springs of the, and the metal creaking loudly. Lex groaned again. Tim put down the radio and started to crawl up over into the front seat. The Tyrannosaurus roared and the metal roof dented downward. Tim felt a sharp pain in, in his head and tumbled to the floor onto the transmission hump. He found himself lying along his, alongside Lex, and he was shocked to see that her whole side of her head was covered in blood. She looked unconscious. There was another jolting impact, and a piece of glass fell all over around him. Tim felt the rain. He looked up and saw the front window was broken. There was a, just a j jagged rim of glass, and beyond, was the head of the Tyrannosaur looking right at him. Tim felt a chill as and then the head rushed forward towards him. The jaws opened and there was a squeal of metal against teeth. He felt the hot stinking breath of the animal and the thick tongue stuck its way into the car through the windshield. The t tongue slapped wetly around the inside of the car. He felt the hot lather of dinosaur saliva, and the Tyrannosaurus roared a defining sound in the car. The head pulled away. Tim scrambled, avoiding the dent in the roof. There was still room to sit in front of by the passenger door. The Tyrannosaurus stood in the rain for him. It seemed confused by what happened to it. Blood dripped from its jaws. The Tyrannosaurus looked at Tim, cocking its head to stare with one big eye. The head moved close to the car, sideways, and peered in. Blood splattered on the dented hood of the Land Cruiser, mixing with the rain. It can't get to me, Tim thought. It's too big. And then the head pulled away, and in a flare of lightning, he saw the hind leg lift up. The world tilted crazily as the Land Cruiser slammed over on its side. The windows splattered in the mud, and he saw the legs fall helplessly against the window and fell down beside her, banging his head. Tim felt dizzy. The Tyrannosaurus jaws clamped to the window frame and the whole land cruiser lifted in the air. Lex shrieked so near to his ear that it hurt. She was suddenly awake and he grabbed her as the Tyrannosaurus crashed the car down again. Tim felt a stabbing pain in his side and, and his sister fell on top of him. The car went up again, tilting crazily. Lex shouted, Timmy! And he saw the door give way beneath her, and then she fell out of the car into the mud. But Tim couldn't answer because the next instant everything swung crazily, and he saw the trunks of palm trees sliding down towards him, moving sideways through the air. He glimpsed the ground very far below, and the hot roar of the Tyrannosaurus, the blazing eye, the tops of the palm trees. And then with a metallic scraping shriek, the car fell from the Tyrannosaurus' jaws, a sickening fall, and Tim's stomach heaved in the moment before the world became black and silent. The other car, Malcolm, gasped, Jesus, what happened to the car? Grant blinked his eyes. The car was gone. Grant couldn't believe it. He peered forward, trying to see if it's through the rain-streaked windshield. The Tyrannosaurus' body was so large it was probably just blocking the vehicle, but no. In another flash of night, lightning, he saw it clearly. The car was gone. What happened, Malcolm said. 
I don't know. Faintly over the ranch heard the sound of a little girl screaming and the dinosaurs standing in darkness on the road up ahead. But they could see well enough to know it was bending over, sniffing the ground. Or eating something. Can you see? Not so much, no, Grant said. The rain pounded on the roof and the car. He listened for the little girl, but he didn't hear her anymore. The two men sat in the car listening. Was it the girl? It sounded like the girl, Malcolm said finally. It did, yes. Was it? I don't know, he said. He felt a seeping fatigue overtake him. Blurred through the rainy windshield, the Tyrannosaurus was coming towards their car. Slow, ominous strides coming right toward them. Malcolm said, you know at times like these one feels well. Perhaps extinct animals should be left to sing. Don't you have that feeling now? Yes, Dr. Grant said. He was feeling his heart pounding. Um, do you have any suggestions on what we do now? I can't think of a thing. Malcolm twisted the handle, kicked open the car, and ran. But even as he did, Grant could see that he was too late. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was too close. There was another crack of lightning, and in an instant of the gr glaring white, Grant watched in horror as the Tyrannosaurus roared and leaped forward. Grant was not too clear on what happened next. Malcolm was running, his feet splashing in the mud. The Tyrannosaurus bounded alongside him and ducked its massive head, and Malcolm was tossed in the air like a small doll. By then, Grant was out of the car, too, feeling the cold rain slashing his face and body. The Tyrannosaurus has turned his back to him, the huge tail swinging through the air. Grant was tensing to run for the woods when suddenly the Tyrannosaurus spun back and faced him and roared. Grant froze, too scared to move. He was standing beside the passenger door of the Land Cruiser, drenched in rain. He was completely exposed. The Tyrannosaurus, more than eight feet away, the big animal roared again, and so close it arranged, the sound was terrifyingly loud, ear-piercing. Grant felt himself shaking with cold and fright. His, he pressed his trembling hands against the metal of the door to steady, to, to steady them. The Tyrannosaurus roared once more, but it did not attack. It cocked its head and looked with first one eye and then the other at the land cruiser and did nothing. What was going on? Grant was thinking. It just stood there. The powerful jaws opened and closed. The Tyrannosaurus bow bellowed angrily and then the big hind leg came crashing down on the roof of the car. The, the claws slid off with a metallic screech, barely missing Grant as he stood there unmoving. The foot splashed in the mud. The head ducked down in a slow arc, and the animal inspected the car, snorting. It peered into the front windshield, and then, moving towards the rear, it banged the passenger door shut and moved right toward Grant as he stood there. Grant was dizzy with fear, his heart pounding in his chest, with the animal so close he could smell the rotten flesh in its mouth and the sweetish blood smell, the sickening stench of the carnivore. His body tensed, awaiting for the inevitable. The big head slid past him, towards the rear of the car. Grant was confused. What had happened? Was it possible the Tyrannosaurus hadn't seen him? It seemed as if it hadn't. But how could that be? Grant looked back to see where the animal was sniffing the rear mounted tire. It nudged the tire with its snout. And then its head swung back. Again, it approached. The time the animal stopped and the black flaring nostrils just inches away, Grant felt the animal's st startling hot breath on his face. But the Tyrannosaurus wasn't sniffing like a dog. It was just breathing. And if anything, it seemed puzzled. No, the Tyrannosaurus couldn't see him. Not if he stood motionless. And in a detached academic corner of his mind, he found an explanation for that. A reason why? The jaws opened for him. The massive head raised up. Grant squeezed his fists together and bit his lip, trying desperately to remain motionless, to make no sound. 
the Tyrannosaurus burrowed again into the night. But now Grant was beginning to understand. The animal couldn't see him, but it suspected that he was there, somewhere. And he was trying to use his power to frighten Grant into revealing some sort of movement. So as long as Grant stood still, he, was, he wouldn't see him. In a final gesture of frustration, the big hind leg of the Tyrannosaurus lifted up and kicked the Land Cruiser over, and Grant felt a searing pain and surprising sensation of his own body flying through the air. It seemed to be happening very slowly, and he had plenty of time to feel the world turn colder and watch the ground rush up to strike him in the face. This scene was of course shown off in the film, However, it is described as more scary in the novel. But one interesting change is from the film and the novel is how in the film we are introduced to the T-Rex, commonly known as Rexy. In the in the novel, she was first introduced to the view to the reader during the during the official tour. However, Steven Spielberg cha changed this to allow the viewers to not see her during the tour and build up their excitement, and then eventually, when she broke out, we would finally get to see the T-Rex. Another key difference from this is with Ian Malcolm. While in the film he receives um, his injury to his leg, which decommissions him for the f film, in the novel he also receives an injury to his leg, however, it eventually would lead to his death. Now, Crichton would bring him back for the Lost World, but Malcolm was in fact dead in the at the end of the original novel. But anyway guys, what do you think of this moment? Is this your favorite from the first novel, or is there another moment from the novel? I'd love to hear it in the comments, but if you've enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate the like, and if you want to join the hunt, hit the subscribe button, and until next time, be safe, and I'll see you later. Bye bye